gravitation. So our goals for this session are the following. We're going to talk about Newton's universal law of gravitation, and then we'll go on to define a more general form of gravitational potential energy than what we used before. So on to Newton's law of universal uh, gravitation. So we have two objects that have mass. One of mass little m, one of mass big M, and their centers of gravity are separated by a distance r. They exert attractive forces on one another. And the magnitude of the force is given by this. Capital G, that's a constant, multiplied by the product of the masses and divided by the distance between, the square of the distance between their centers. So G has a value, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And of course the direction of the force is always back toward the object exerting that force because gravitation is an attractive force. Now, our, this new form of the equation must be consistent with the old form that we've been using, the mg form. So if we set mg equal to gmm over r squared, first thing that happens is that the m's cancel out, and so you're, what you're left with is little g, which we sometimes call the acceleration due to gravity, is big G times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. If you did it on a different planet, you'd have the mass of that planet and that planet's radius squared. So this is where the number 9.8 meters per second squared comes from. It comes from the mass of the planet we're on and the radius of the planet we're on, as long with the value of the gravitational constant. Okay, so consider this little puzzle. So as you bring an object toward the Earth, you're in decreasing the distance between the centers of gravity between that object and the center of the Earth, the gravitational force increases. There's more attraction. So the closer it gets, the bigger the force. Now, let's keep going. We get to the Earth's surface, then we tunnel down into the center of the Earth. If it's right at the center of the Earth, what's the force of gravity on it? I'm gonna, only going to give you two choices, zero or infinity. So let's see what we think. Okay, so it turns out the net gravitational force is zero if the thing is at the exact center of the Earth. And you can prove that with a free body diagram. You've got forces pulling one way from one side of the Earth, the other way from the other side of the Earth, and those forces cancel out. However, if you use GMM over R squared and R goes to zero, then you might expect an infinite value. But it turns out that uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation, the GMM over R squared equation, only works when the objects are outside one another, not inside. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the gravitational field, and again we're going to use little g for that, and we're just going to give it a different name now. Okay, so anything with mass sets up a field, a gravitational field around itself and it's the gravitational force per unit mass that an object experiences when it is placed at that point. That's what the field at a point is. And a field is something that has a, a magnitude and direction at all points in space. Okay, so what we can write is that the value of the gravitational field is the gravitational force divided by the mass of the object feeling that force. And the units of gravitational field are force units over mass units, in other words, newtons per kilogram, and that's exactly the same as meters per second squared. So on the surface of the Earth, we can say acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, or we can say, equivalently, the strength of the gravitational field is 9.8 newtons per kilogram directed down. And that means every kilogram of material feels a force of 9.8 newtons. Okay, what about potential energy? So we'll do something similar for potential energy that we did for force. Again, two objects, little m, big M, separated by a distance r. Our potential energy equation is UG is minus GMM over r, not r squared, but r. What does the minus sign tell us? tells us that it's an attractive interaction. And note that we have no choice over where the zero is. The zero is predefined, so potential energy is zero as r goes to infinity. So, what matters really is the change in gravitational potential energy. So don't get caught up by this minus sign. For small changes in height of the Earth's surface, this equation here is actually equivalent to our MGH form of the change in gravitational potential energy equation. Okay, so let's apply this to this scenario of how fast you have to throw an object up in the air so it never comes back down. 
neglect air resistance. That's a huge thing to neglect, but we're going to do it anyway. This is what we call the escape speed, the minimum speed required to escape from a planet's gravitational pull. Okay, so how should we figure it out? Should we use forces? Should we use energy? Well, it turns out that forces are really hard to work with because as the object gets away from the Earth, the force steadily changes. On the other hand, we can apply energy conservation. One of the reasons is we're ignoring air resistance. And so we don't have to worry about how it gets from A to B. We just have to worry about what's the energy at A, what's the energy at B, how has it been transformed in between. Okay, so here we go. Here's our energy conservation equation, our typical one, and we write this down and throw out as many terms as we can. And no resistive forces, so the work done by non-conservative uh, forces term goes to zero. Assume the object barely makes it to infinity, so both the final potential energy and final kinetic energy are zero. So we have a very odd looking equation, which is ui plus ki equals zero. Well, that can be true because ui is a negative number. So here's this kind of shown as a bar chart. At the surface of the Earth, we've got uh, some negative potential energy, an equal amount of positive kinetic energy, and then a very long way away, infinitely far, all the energy's gone away. But the total energy in both cases is zero. Okay, so we'll plug in our values. Minus gm over r is one half mv escape, and you solve for v escape. Mass of the object itself doesn't matter. The escape speed happens to be root 2g times the mass of the planet over the radius of the planet. Okay, so that is how you apply that uh, form of the energy equation to a particular example to find the escape speed. All right. And for the Earth, we plug in the numbers, we get 11.2 kilometers per second, so it's pretty hard to throw an object up that fast, so all the objects we generally throw up come back and hit us. The end.